Okay, so the first thing you probably don't know about your pacemaker is there is an accelerometer or some form of sensor that is measuring your movement. So I just went on a run. I think you can kind of tell. And even though I don't have a pacemaker, if I had one in me, it would be measuring the appropriate heart rate that I should be running at. So for example, my max heart rate is somewhere around 180. And when I'm doing exercise, my heart rate should be around like 140, 150. I guess that kind of dates myself. And if my heart rate, if I had chronotropic incompetence, I wasn't able to get my heart rate up with exercise, it just stayed at 60. My pacemaker would help my heart rate accelerate. So even though you may not have it turned on, your device is always measuring. And when we are looking at your diagnostics, your histograms, we look to see if there's a nice slope. Okay, here it is in action. So this is a patient, I look at this and I'm like, okay, 30% of the time they're at their rest heart rate of 60 beats per minute. And then about 45% at a more active heart rate of 70 to 80. I don't see them getting their heart rate up too high that often. So they may not be the most avid power walker, but I do see somewhat of a slope. I can also tell this patient has their sensor turned on because the amount of paced beats is not only at the rest rate, but also filtering into higher rates, like 70, 80, 90, 100, 110. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some machines where the sensor may be fooled. Let's guess why. So elliptical, the body's moving up and down. Another elliptical, ah, the bike. So if I'm on the bike, my legs are moving, but my accelerometer is like a diving board. So something you may not know about your pacemaker sensor, if you require it, is that it needs a forward motion. I'll show you. This is going to activate the sensor to help get my heart rate up and then let it ease back down. Okay, the second thing I bet you did not know about your pacemaker. Just like I'm working my body hard right now, your pacemaker is working hard every single day. Whether it's a pacemaker or defibrillator, it's taking measurements every single day and self-regulates itself. So similar to my body self-regulating its temperature when I'm working out, your pacemaker is self-regulating itself by taking three measurements every day, whether that be an automatic threshold test, looking at the electrical sensing inside the heart, or taking an impedance measurement similar to physics and Ohm's law. Okay, and the third thing I think you can tell it's all about, you know, how our pacemakers work. The third thing is that battery curves of devices are very predictable. Here's a picture. All right, so our axes are time and years and voltage, how much energy. So we start off with about 3.08 volts. Our curve is extremely predictable, and then it begins to drop off, usually around 2.65 volts, give or take. That is commonly known as the elective replacement interval. The voltage will be different on different manufacturers. When we get close to this voltage, we can start doing one month follow-ups with patients. During the time before, very safe and predictable. So while you may be used to coming in either once a year, every six months, or every three months, when we get closer to that elective replacement interval towards the end of battery, towards the end of the battery curve, you'll have you'll see your device technician bringing you in about every month or so. This is so that we can catch elective replacement and get a new battery. Is elective replacement a dead battery? How soon do you have to get it changed? Well, it's a very full tank of gas. Unlike my car, <laughs> you have anywhere from three to six months to get a device changed and devices are self-regulating just like our bodies so they know how to preserve them themselves. But we definitely want the full capacity of our device so it's best to get it changed as soon as possible and convenient once you hit that elective replacement. So thanks for tuning into this impromptu session. Those are one, two, three things that your pacemaker is working behind the scenes on every day.
and I hope you learned something new. Thanks guys. Wait, don't go. Here's a bonus strip for you. This is a patient recording their palpitations. And then here is a little bit of a taste of the day in the life and why my gas tank is empty. See if you can find where I missed a turn once or twice. Thanks guys.